Guten Morgen, Guten Tag, Guten Abend. We will together discuss the water cycle of the Danube Basin, as well as different future scenarios with which we can use to test current infrastructure and development plans. The Danube Basin is in Central and Eastern Europe. Right now we're going to look at a density map of precipitation across the Danube Basin. Danube Basin spans 19 different countries and is the most international basin in the world. What we're looking at now is a density map, so areas that become lighter or more transparent represent areas of less than areas of deeper blue. Right now we're looking at precipitation, that is rainfall and snowfall. So we see along the coast and the Alps we have higher snow than over the Hungarian plains, for example. So the distribution of precipitation is heterogeneous over the Danube Basin. It is not even across the Danube Basin. Now we're going to look at a density map of evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration is the amount of water that transforms into vapor over soils and plants. So the water that transforms from liquid water to vapor water by evaporating from soils or transpiring through plants, so traveling through plants and exiting the stomata of plants to become water vapor. Again, areas that are darker represent areas of higher evapotranspiration versus areas that are lighter. So we see that evapotranspiration is also heterogeneous across the Danube Basin. One last map, we'll look at discharge. This represents the amount of water flowing th through the rivers. So here, we see the main line of the Danube Basin, beginning north of the Alps, as well as south of the Alps, to feed into the main line of the Danube River, eventually ending in Romania and Ukraine. The water cycle of the Danube Basin. At this website, globalwaterbalance.herokuapp.com, which you can also go to, it starts off looking at the global water balance, but we'll focus in by touching on the Danube. What this represents, this map particularly, or this water circle, represents the distribution of inputs and outputs, or inflows and outflows, into and out of the Danube Basin. Right now we're looking at a year, 197, we're looking at 2014. In this year, of everything that entered the Danube Basin or fell upon the Danube Basin, around 90% was rainfall and about 10% was snowfall. Remember, this is not evenly distributed across the basin. What happened to the water that fell onto the basin? Well, most of it evapotranspired. Most of it in that reddish, yellowish, orangey map passed through crops such as pass through crops, pass through forests, or grasslands. So most of the water that fell onto the basin in this year left the basin through evapotranspiration. The rest of this, around 25% in this year, and in any year it could be between, say, 20, maybe up to 40%. That's the amount of water that passed through the whole basin and left as river water into the Black Sea. So going back to that map we showed, in this example year, 25% of all the water that fell over the Danube Basin, so 25% of all of this precipitation left the Danube Basin through river discharge and eventually entering into the Black Sea. This changes somewhat year to year. Now with a little bit of information about the water cycle, we can look at different future scenarios of what the water cycle in the Danube Basin might look like. These use different RCP and SSP scenarios. RCP stands for Representative Concentration Pathways. These are different scenarios on the greenhouse gas emissions within the atmosphere and how this might affect the climate. The RCP scenarios stand for the SSP scenarios stand for Shared Socioeconomic Pathways. These represent different scenarios of how we as a human community might develop. For example, more cooperation or less cooperation, or for example, heavily adopting and transitioning to green technologies versus focusing on fossil fuels. Given these different climate and socioeconomic uh, scenarios, we combine all of them to come with a, a wide range of what we call reasonable estimates on what could happen moving into the future. The future is inherently unreasonable. This gives us a, a wide range with which we can test current development plans and infrastructures against to see how they may be challenged or perhaps find opportunity in uh, the changes that 
uh, may or may not manifest. So this is precipitation across the Danube Basin from 1900, annual precipitation from 1900 up till, let's say, 2050. Let's take a more recent experience of this. So let's say within the last, we'll compare the last 50 years to the next, let's compare 30 years against 30 years. Let's go to 1990. We see comparing 1990 to 2020, then looking at 2020 to 2050. Again, these are just scenarios which you can test against. I wouldn't bet on any of them, but what one does find in these scenarios is that there can be more opportunity for extreme scenarios. So extreme years or extreme seasons may happen more often, as well as the extreme points may be higher than they were within the last century. So we see just comparing the last 30 years that in one of the scenarios, pessimistic scenario, which represents Right, so the specific scenario that it's coming from is not, is not so important as they are just representing different combinations of scenarios for futures that may or may not manifest. Again, the, the range of what is possible is interesting as to test us to stress test the current system or again find opportunity in the current system for years of heavy water years of, of less water may or may not be detrimental there is opportunity in change or in something different as long as as long as the system has the capacity to absorb and benefit from such changes or prepare for such changes but we do find examples of years that are wetter than have been in the last century and sorry, wetter up here, or similar to the extremity, but years also of extreme dryness. Let's, uh, here's another nice way of looking at it. So each of these points represents a single year. We're looking at the historical. This is a box whisker plot. So the median is represented in the middle. Uh, the box represents 25% of the data and 25% of the data. So 50% of, of all the data points, or oh, say, 50% of all the amount of water that fell within a year falls within the box. Dámy a pánové, následuje stanice Děčín hlavní nádraží. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the station Děčín hlavní nádraží. Si jaké je ty fágeste, vy je rajchný jetzt Děčín hlavní nádraží. 50% of the data falls within the box, and then 25% of the data and 25% of the data falls within these outer whiskers. If we have a dot falling out of this whisker entirely, like here, it's an outlier. So it it is significantly, it is sufficiently different from the rest of the data as to not be included within the whiskers or box. But if this is the highest point throughout the last, as from 1900, the last century, we see from 2020 to 2050, all the scenarios show points that are higher than this, and all the scenarios show points that are lower than this. So all to say, the what extreme means moving into the future might widen, and the occurrence of wetter or drier years may, may also increase. What also changes moving into the future is scenarios of population and GDP or economic development. And both of these will affect water use. This goes from 1970 to 2050. Say we're at 2020 right here. The scenario started in 2015. This gives different scenarios on how irrigation demand, domestic demand, and industrial demand might change moving into the future. Again, these are just scenarios. And what we see striking here is that industrial demand dominates the Danube Basin, uh, where there is, compared to other basins, relatively less irrigation, and domestic demand is less than industrial demand. But we see here that perhaps industrial demand continues to increase up until about 2030, and then one of the scenarios, it decreases down to 1970, 1980 levels, while on the other two scenarios, domestic demand increases. We okay, so using all the information we have, how can the Danube Basin prepare for a more resilient future, admitting the higher and lower extremes than experienced in the last century, as well that years of extremity or seasons of extremity may happen more often. At the same time, industrial demand is increasing potentially through this period. Good luck.